Welcome back to the Pro Tip, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to level up your animation game while you're having an actual animation job. And this is gonna be a pro tip just because it is about when you're professional, what do you do? You have your day job. How do you progress? How do you level up? How do you get to that next level in your career in terms of your animation skills? And this is based on a question that I got on my YouTube channel, one of my clips. It's a great question and let's dive into that. Now I say this though, but first, hi, my name is JD and I do animation lectures like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do acting analysis clips. I do feedback. I do product reviews. I do rig reviews. I do a bunch of stuff. This is the beginning pitch for my channel. Browse around, you like it, subscribe, it's awesome. And if not, maybe I'll convince you later. But that's that. Got to got to sneak in that pitch in there. Now, disclaimer: what I'm about to say now only worked for me. So I'm not going to presume who you are. Obviously, I don't know. It's all very subjective. But these are the things that helped me. This is what has helped me in my career. And maybe you can pick one or two or everything. I don't know. So this is not generally speaking. This is just what has helped me, and hopefully it helps you. So subjective thoughts ahead. And the first thing that I want to mention that has helped me tremendously is teaching. So what can you do to level up your game? Teach. Now I know with that come complications. Like where do you teach? Do you have the experience to teach? I totally get it. And I have substitutes for that later. Well, let me explain to you why teaching has helped me. There's nothing like having to break down your own process and being able to explain it to someone else. That has been the biggest driver for me. Because as you work, you do things sometimes by instinct or you're used to it. It's a workflow. It's just something you just do because it works for you. And you never had to explain to someone why. Why does it work for you? What are the steps that you're taking to make this work? So when you teach, you have to look at your own workflow. You have to break it all down and you have to distill it into an explanation uh, you know, a lecture in, in text form, in visual form, or with examples where you examine yourself and you make it digestible for someone else. And so by re-examining what you're doing, it's almost like you're going over your own process, reaffirming it, and maybe realizing, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, maybe I should do a little better. So it forces you to tweaking your workflow as well. So it's kind of like a back and forth that's super beneficial. But breaking things down is so helpful in understanding the steps. What do I do and what comes first and what comes next? Because when you show something to a student and then they go, well, why do you do this? You can't tell them, I don't know, that's just how I do it, it works for me. That's just not good enough. Why does it work? And how do you do it? And are there any other ways? And that's a great way about teaching because you can't just always teach your ways. Sure, you can say, this is how I do it. This is how, Never mind. and they can try to follow that. But you will notice quickly that when you have a classroom full of, well, I don't know, full, maybe that five students, 10, 15, 20, 21, like I have right now, not everybody works the same way. Not everybody learns the same way. Others have, you know, technical limitations. They don't have the same tools that you have, add-ons or, or physical things like in terms of tablets or whatever. So you are forced in finding ways to teach your workflow, but adapted to different personalities, different ways of working. Like for me, I don't do steps because of the work that I had at ILM. We just didn't do steps because of live action plates and how it's smooth and you got stuff pop around. It doesn't quite work. So for me, I just never really did steps, but a ton of students do. So I still had to learn about it. I still had to practice it at home so I could help them and teach them and, and talk about the best practices about that workflow. So it's really, there's so much where you learn more to help other people. So that is immediately going to level up your game. And as you teach other students, you get to see their work, obviously. And the biggest factor with that is that it humbles you and it motivates you. Because some students, they, it's ta it takes a long time for them to get to the next level. And that already is going to force you to find other ways to teach. So whatever you said after a couple of weeks still doesn't work, got to find another way to make it click. Doesn't always work, but again, forces you to re-examine your workflow, whatever method you're teaching, and then finding other ways to teach that. And once it clicks and you see that progression, it's like, holy crap, that's really good. And sometimes you get students that are off the back, right off the start, really good already. And then you're going, damn, they're going to take my job away. <laughs> like, this is going to be, this is really humbling. I need to do better. I need to work faster. I need to be more efficient. I need to do it, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's there's such a back and forth of, this is cool. You can show them what lies ahead, what the career is going to be. That motivates them. That inspires them. And then you see their work and you go, wow, this is really good. I got to level up as well. So it's this constant back and forth of learning and inspiration, which is so cool when you teach. That being said, totally understand you might not be able to get into one of those online schools to teach for whatever reason, financially, your portfolio, your experience. I don't know. I mean, brick and mortar school is tricky now with the pandemic and everything. So being on site somewhere went out the window potentially. So what do you do? You don't have to be a quote unquote teacher, mentor, whatever. You can still provide knowledge online. You can still critique other people's work. You can go to forums and check things out. You can offer help. 
help a bunch of people post on LinkedIn their shots and ask for critiques. You can go there. That could be your outlet of providing help and your information. You can go on social media, right? You can go on Twitter, Instagram. You can post your own clips, dissect them there and do a thread. Like this is how I did things. This is what works for me and so on. So the current online social media, whatever infrastructure you're exposed to, you like Facebook groups, whatever you want to do is a great outlet A to teach, but also to critique or YouTube. You can do that. Me doing my Friday lectures and especially my Thursday active analysis tips, which I will always plug. It has really helped me level up again because I have developed a critical eye when I watch something like I take notes as much for myself as for the channel. Obviously, I like to help people, but selfishly, this is all for me too. I watch something and I go, that's a cool acting choice and goes into my memory. I put it on my blog where I have my whole list of things. Same thing when I do lectures, I go, okay, well, I know how to do this, but do I really know how to do this? And then by researching and practicing and preparing this whole thing for the channel, it's like a revision for myself. Like I relearn it again and you don't have to use YouTube. YouTube, you can go on Instagram Reels, you can go on TikTok. There are many ways where people teach. So there are many, many outlets where you don't have to be in an official school. You can teach other ways online. So teaching, absolutely recommend it. It's the best thing that has happened to me. I love it. It's also a ton of fun on top of that. It's not just like the dry learning. It's so much fun to teach, talk to the students and have that back and forth. It's so great. Now, that's one thing. The other thing that has helped me, which is tricky because it's it involves a lot of time, is to animate at home. So, or where we are, I don't know, like where we, maybe you go somewhere to animate. So when you look at your job, and this is why this is a pro tip, because you're professional, you have your whatever nine to six, nine to seven, whatever your schedule is. That is your block. You can't really touch maybe over lunch. So what do you do? You have the morning, you have the evening. And this is why it's tough because you got to take time away from something, time away from sleep, which I don't recommend, but maybe some of your hobbies, stuff that you like to do. Don't take time away from your family, but there might be a day or two where you go, listen, today I got to work. Sorry. And someone has to help out and rebalance, you know, the family work or house chores or whatever it is. Or maybe it's just weekends. I don't know. But that's the tough part is finding the time in your busy day to do this. So you just have to be okay with sacrificing something. Maybe you like to play video games. You got to stop that for a couple of weeks, right? There's always something that will suffer, but you got to just look at and balance what is worth taking away time-wise and putting that into animating. But animating at home is really great just because for me, what I do is I animate stuff that I don't do at work. So ILM used to be all fairly photo real. Sometimes you got Rango's, you got a Space Jam 2, but it's mostly realistic, uh, a lot of camera work. And I mean, I still like to do that when I do my, my own stuff. But what I do is I try to do something style-wise that's different than what I do at work. Same thing with teaching. So I work, I used to work in photo real, but all my teaching has always been cartoony. Even a creature work, even though it's set up as being photo real, you know, kind of like you, you do a horse trot horse cycle, like just kind of emulating reference features. Not a huge fan because most of the students, when you ask them, they want to work at feature companies or TV shows or anything cartoony. I tried to tweak the assignment so that even the creature work is cartoony based. So Fim was always work realistically, but teach and learn and do everything at home cartoony to have that balance. And that has always been a huge help because you don't come home and do your own thing where it's the same thing again. And I'm not sure if that's going to help you level up. Maybe if you're stuck at work doing the same shots all the time. So maybe you're typecast with a certain thing and you want to level up with within your work and do other shots, then maybe practicing at home other things and then showing that to your soups and leads, say, hey, I can do this as well, might be a good way to then get other shots and then level up. So you don't have to do something that's a different style, but I will definitely help you see other things and just be more versatile. But if you're stuck with a certain style at work and you want to do more at work, then that's what I recommend. And again, it takes time, but you got to animate at home, do something to show to someone, hey, I can do this as well. Because they don't know, like if you assume they know, but they don't. But since we're on the topic of work, let's continue with this. So either you animate at home, it's one thing, but at work, you can also ask for other shots. You can push yourself and ask, hey, can I do this safely? Of course, you don't want to go crazy and ask for something, then you get it and then you can't deliver and that's not good for you. So look at what the shots you're doing right now, which shots you would like to do and are any of these shots available in the sequence? Then ask your lead in soup, hey, is there is there room for me to do this? Can I try out one of these? And then that way you can also level up. So you're not passively waiting for someone to give you something new to show what you can do. You are actively asking, can I do this? I can show you that I can. And then you level up that way. And again, if you're not given the chance to do this, do shots at home and then you can show them they can see, oh yeah, he or she can actually do this. Let's give them something else. So for me, it was mostly VFX, cameras and vehicles and creatures and digital and stuff like that. And then we had Space Jam 2 and I did those cartoony tests and people were, I mean, this was what I was told. I'm not saying like, yeah, this is normal, but I was told that when they saw this, they said, oh, that's really cool. Who knew JD could do this? And that's just a reminder of, but they don't know. If you don't tell them, if you don't show them, 
They don't know. It's not like they want to hold you back. Maybe there's someone wondering, watch out, politics there. But if they haven't seen what you can do, how would they know that they can give you those shots? Again, ask for those you can prove yourself or work at home and show them what you can do. And that's not just with your lead and your soups on the show. Let your managers know. Let them know these are my goals. I want to become a lead in a couple of years, whatever, or tomorrow, whatever, or a supervisor or something else in your field. Because again, if they don't know, how can they help you? So tell people what your plan is, what you would like to do, and hopefully you'll get a response where they say, listen, you got to work on this, this, and this first before you get to that level. Actually, years ago, I remember sending out to all the soups, hey, I would like to be a lead. I would like to be on that next level and learn all this and do that. And then I got a couple of soups writing back. Okay, well, you need to do this first. This is what's asked of you, blah, 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 blah. And it was great. I got a list and they knew what I wanted to do. And actually, not, not long after that, props to Scott Benza, who's the amazing animator at ILM. He gave me a chance to be a lead on Transformers 2. It was great. It was a really difficult show. And I learned a ton. And again, this is only because I asked and people heard. It's like, okay, well, let me help you. And then you have that back and forth and feedback and then you can level up. Again, if you don't know, tell them. Just don't assume that people know what you can do, or what you want. There has to be a communication. Something else that helps at work is that you don't just want to do your shots. Don't be in that bubble of, oh, this is my turnover. These are the shots. That's all I'm going to do. Work for the team. So start creating libraries and cycles and just do more where the team can benefit from this. A, they're going to see you're a team player. You might get other work that you haven't done before to expand on this, to help the team. It's just try to look beyond the confines of your shot and look overall, what's the need of the sequence? What's the need of the show? What is the need of the team? And then expand your skills in whatever areas you can do. Maybe you got to learn something else. And by providing help to someone else, just like we're teaching, you will level up because you're going to do something new, something else that will help other people. That's going to be the motivator in all this. So don't be stuck in that bubble. Totally understand that you are at the beginning. Let's pretend you just got the job. You want to prove yourself. You get your shots. You want to do a good job there. But as time goes by, take those blinders off and then look at what's out there, how else you can contribute to the show and help out the team. And lastly, if that doesn't work, you might be stuck at work where there's just no way to level up. There are just not different shows that will work for you or you just never get those shots that you like or it's just a smaller company and you can't level up because there are only so many spots or it's a massive big company and there's so many people in line waiting for the next career opportunity where you just can't level up that way. It can totally happen. Tough things then, then you got to switch jobs. There are lots of people that switch jobs all the time and switching jobs, not that I have a huge experience, like I have barely any experience with this, but by switching jobs, A, you get a new network of people, you will learn new tools, there are new workflows, you have to adapt to a new pipeline. So there's so much you will learn by switching things around for sure. I've noticed this is because I switched from ILM to Warner's and it's with feature to TV, totally new. I'm learning stuff every day. It's great. And I imagine you do this all the time, maybe every two years or so. Obviously you will level up a lot, but then the tricky thing is, can you do this? If you're single and you got the financial means and I don't know, like the work visa type thing, that's one thing, but you got a family, you can't constantly always move kids and school. So it's, it's a tough one, but it has definitely helped for me because after a while, I've noticed that I have stagnated. I wanted to do more things and I wanted to do different types of shots, but then you have to look at, it's just not what the company provided. And I love what I was doing, but I want to go a step further. And it's not the fault of the company. It's not the company's portfolio. It's just not what they do. So then you have to look at, okay, where else do they do something? So for me, what I started to do is I started to work on my demo reel in earnest and actually started taking notes. And then, so I don't know what you're going to see this, but it's basically notes and notes and notes and notes and notes. These are A, the shots that I started. So I have a bit of a diary thing of that was going to be for my lectures and for my courses where I wrote down like my process and what I went through. But then after that, after these two, then it's just lists, lists of shots and shots ideas. So that's what I had to do. I made that list. I started working in earnest on a reel. I was determined I'm going to do something else, different style, cartoony and switch companies if I can. Because again, I'm older. I'm also more expensive. It's not easy to kind of switch around after a certain time. But I started the shots, put them online. I marked on LinkedIn open to work. That was a big change. It was kind of bittersweet because I mean, I love ILM. And then the moment you put this on, like I'm going to leave. It's it's sad, but I, it's something you had to do. But the moment you did this, I got approached by a bunch of people where like, hey, I didn't know you've been there for quite some time. Open to what? So that kind of got the whole ball rolling, interviewing a bunch of companies. And they got an email from Warner's. They saw it, from what they told me. They saw my act analysis clips. They liked my thoughts and the, the, the thinking about acting and stuff like that. They checked on LinkedIn, saw the status open, got an email. And within about two weeks, that was it. Contacted. We talked about, we had you know, negotiations about salary and a contract. And that was that. And then I switched. Super helpful that it was remote and it still is. So that was a massive factor and everything just aligned. And then now I'm off to new adventures. Scary, of course, because it's different company, different people, different type of work. I love it though. It's like, there's so much that I'm learning. It's the team is great, but it's going to be different. And it's going to be for a couple of years. I mean, it's going to be done. I can't say when it's done. And then after that, I got to look at, well, what's next? Can 
can I stay there? Is there a next project? Do I need to switch? So I did pull myself out of the comfort or the, the security, quote unquote, it's not always super secure, but I've been extremely lucky, like 17 and a half years at one company. But it is going to be now a different world that I willingly put myself into. So scary, nervous, but how it goes, you got to change things up. And if you could do this on a more frequent basis, just look at how much I'm learning right now, you will level up a ton. But again, it comes like after a while at work, you make friends. These are your work friends. You've known these, you know, in my case, over 17 years. So it's a tough thing to constantly change as well. So I'm not saying that's like an easy thing to do or that's like super recommended. And again, this is very subjective and it all depends on your situation. But there you go. So longer clip as I'm seeing here, but this is what has helped me. So teaching, doing stuff at home, helping out, doing different styles. And then at the end, if, if that doesn't work, switching companies. It's kind of like, it's you have to kind of look at what can you do and how far can you escalate the situation into leaving a company? If that's a big deal for you, I, I don't know. That's my list. Let me know in the comments. I'm super curious. I would love to hear from people, if any of the professionals are watching my channel, what you have done, like what was your way? It would be great to get kind of a thread in the comments of, oh yeah, but I also did this and this has helped me and like maybe learning a different software. That's going to be like a whole other thing that's going to be helpful. Like, what did you do? I would love to hear thoughts from anybody out there that's working currently. How did they level up? Or maybe if you are at that stage where you can't level up, maybe you've heard all of this and you say, I can't do any of this because of ABC. What else can I do? So then maybe I can do a part two. I don't know. So maybe I can help you with that. So comment, let me know. I'm very, very curious because again, it's very subjective depending on the city or the company, the city, the country, everything. So let me know. Other than that, again, it's getting kind of long. So I'm going to stop. Uh, thank you for watching till the very end. Thank you so much. Subscribe, my usual pitch at the end. So maybe this was helpful. You don't want to miss any of my future uploads. I don't know. And of course, get a pitch for my workshop. If you feel like those tips are helpful, then you feel like maybe I can help you work on your shots in your spare time while you work at a company and you want to level up. My workshops are open. You know the pitch. You can sign up at any time. Link description with all the information. I, I would love to help you if possible. And so let me know. I don't sign ups are always open. Let me know. And that's kind of that. I'm going to leave it at that. Again, it's kind of a longer clip. Thank you for watching. Hope it's helpful. And hopefully I'll see you in my next clip.